Hi everybody, Rob Mize here with a fun and relatively quick and easy After Effects technique to share with you. With just a few simple commands and effects, we'll get After Effects to sketch images from our video, still pics, and graphics. Once you've seen how we accomplish this, I'm sure you'll find numerous ways to put this to use. So let's get started. Let's create a new comp and name it Sketch. We'll make it 1280 by 720 square pixels. And let's go ahead and add a background for us to sketch on. Perhaps a legal pad. Let's hit R to reveal our rotation properties and rotate that 90 degrees. And now scale it to fit our composition. And now I'll bring in my footage. And I'll right-click that and transform fit to comp. This is my friend and colleague Kent Faddis, who produces news stories for the University of Missouri and distributes them throughout the country to major markets, small markets, even to cable outlets. So there's a good chance you may have seen some of Kent's work. Let's add a curve effect here and see if we can sweeten this up a little bit. It's a little dark. We'll go ahead and go with that now. Now I'm going to hit LL to reveal my audio waveforms. And I'm familiar with this footage, so I know what I'm looking for. I'm going to select the frame that I want After Effects to sketch for us. And I want it right before this sound bite. So I'm going to come back here and back up until I get right where I want to sketch. Let's save that point right there. All right, I'll hit Option, left bracket, to trim that. And I'll bring it back. I'm going to put this at the 10 second mark, considering that's how long I want it to take for my image to sketch on. Let's right click this footage layer and go up to Time and Enable Time Remapping. And it automatically puts keyframes at the end and at the beginning of our footage. I'm going to add another one right here at this point. I'm going to use Command C to copy that keyframe, come back to the head of my timeline, and use Option Left Bracket to extend this clip to the point of my current time indicator. I'll add a keyframe and use Command V to paste the keyframe that I just copied from here. So that's the same keyframe. I'm going to use Option Command Click to turn it into a hold keyframe. That image is going to hold until it gets to this keyframe, which I'll call my start keyframe, because then my time remapping allows the footage to continue. So we have a freeze up until that point, and that's the period in which our image will sketch on. So let's add a stylized cartoon effect. And we're only going to render the edges. Let's change detail radius to 40, detail threshold to 40. We can close down this fill, we're not using that. The edge threshold, let's change to 3.5, the width to 1, and the edge enhancement to about 10. I'm going to drag back this edge black level back to, oh, let's see what that looks, what is that? Minus 0.7, and that looks good right there. Now let's add a key, a luma key. We're going to key out the brighter parts of this image and bring our threshold up to about 120. And there we go. Now let's go up to Layer and choose Auto Trace. And the settings we want here, we want to trace this current frame based on the alpha channel. 
and I am going to change this threshold up to about 95. I want these masks that are going to be traced applied to a new layer. And there I have preview clicked so we can see the masks that are going to be created. Let's click OK and After Effects has created our mask for us. Let's go up here and rename this Strokes and hit M to reveal our masks. I'll select one and use Command A to select them all and change the change the mode to none. Let's come up to our effects panel and choose generate stroke and let's choose all masks stroke sequentially. Change the color here to black And you can see here, if we take a closer look, that these masks have been drawn around the edges created by the cartoon effect. So you actually have kind of a double stroke here that has been created by the auto trace. But here's how we'll use that. Let's change our brush size up to about 5 and our brush hardness up to 100%. Now that's not really the image that we want, but it's going to work for us. We'll change paint style to on transparent. And let's close that up. And now let's add a keyframe here on the end parameter. Hit U to reveal that. And we'll drag that down to the 10 second mark the point where we want our animation completed. And here at the start of our timeline, let's add another keyframe with a value of 0%. If we just look at our stroke effect, you'll see what's happening here. That it is drawing on to reveal our image. Now, before we go any further, I'll remind you this is not the image that we're going to actually see, but it is going to work for us. But before we do that, I want to look at how that's animating on. And I know that I want the background to come on before Kent does. So let me go to Strokes and hit M to reveal our masks. If I click on one of these masks and then hover in this area, you see you get your marquee selection tool. And I'll use that to grab as many of these masks as I can without getting the background. And I'll use Command-Shift-Click to include this mask right here. These are all highlighted, the ones that have been selected. And I'll come to, oh, from the bottom I'll start coming up. And the first time I see a break in these masks, I'm going to grab it and drag it down. so that the masks that I've just selected are now all at the bottom. These will be the last ones to be drawn on. I actually want the facial features to be the very last thing. Let me grab those masks and find one right here and I'll drag it down to the bottom of these layers of masks. So now as this animates on, we start with our background. And then finally Kent comes on and his features. Now let's see how this is going to actually work for us. Let's select our footage layer and turn that visibility back on. Go over here to track mat and choose alpha mat strokes. Now as we move forward in our timeline, we're not seeing the strokes from the stroke effect, but as they animate on, they are providing the alpha channel that reveals the edge from our cartoon effect, which I think creates a much nicer drawing. 
Now there's a couple of more things that I'd like to do with this. This looks a little hard and the color's not right, I don't think. So I'll fix that by adding a perspective drop shadow. Let me change the color here to a gray, kind of what I think would be a pencil gray. Change opacity to 100%, distance to zero, shadow only, and softness about four. Let me mark that endpoint with an N, and let's do a RAM preview and see what we have. And there our image sketches on. Now I want the footage to begin moving at this point, but I still want my sketch effect. Uh, highlight this layer and use Command D to copy it. On this layer, let's use Alt left bracket to trim the start point. And on our original layer, I'm going to come back one frame and use Alt right bracket to trim the endpoint. And if I look at those two, it looks pretty good. I'm seeing a bit more fill on this second one. Um, the point is, on this second one, we are not using a track mat. But we still see it. Let me drag this down here and change that track mat to none. And move that back up there. There we go. And I can also trim the strokes layer because I don't need it once our image starts to move, like so. Now, I don't want this to just go from zero to full speed. So let's see if we can soften that transition a little bit. Let me come forward to the point where Kent starts his sound bite. I'll hit LL to see that waveform. Use my plus key to zoom in on that a little bit. Place my cursor there, and I want to add another time remap keyframe. Now let me come back to this first one, click that, and click our graph editor. And now this keyframe I'm going to change to an easy ease out. And grab this handle and just bring it forward a little bit so that instead of an abrupt change from no motion to full motion, that will happen more gradually. So I'll close down this graph editor. Now again, let me hit LL to look at that waveform. And right here is where Kent completes his sound bite. So I'll trim that using option right bracket. And let's say right about here, we want our sketch effect to transition to our video. So let me use Command D to again duplicate this layer. Let me hit U to reveal the keyframes there. I'm going to get rid of this time remap by just clicking the stopwatch. I'll drag this back to the beginning of our timeline because this I'm going to use as my audio source since it has no time remap on it and time remap affects audio as well and I don't want that affected. Let's get rid of these other effects and hit T to reveal opacity. Let's add a keyframe there and move that forward one second by using Option Shift right arrow 10, 20, 30 frames. And now add another keyframe with 0% value. And as we come along, we dissolve to Kent's 
full color video with no effect. Now there's one other thing we can do to sweeten this up a bit. If you have Final Cut Pro, then you may very well also have Soundtrack Pro, which has some very good sound effects with it. So I'm going to jump over here to Soundtrack Pro, and in my sound effects, let's search for a pencil. And we see a couple of things here. Pencil writing. If we click on this, we hear a writing pencil. And I think that'll work for us. So let's double click that. That will load the effect into our soundtrack timeline. And choose File, Save As. I usually save as an AIFF file if I'm using that in After Effects. Now let's go back to After Effects. And I've already added that to this project, so I'll drag this down. And again, hit LL to reveal my waveforms. The sound effect is a little loud at first, and I could adjust that, but it's also a little fast. So I'm going to pull this back some and stretch it out. I don't think that's going to affect the pitch so much that it's bothersome. Let's render that out and see how it looks. Farmers are always encouraged to find creative ways to make money on their property. Landowners can make anywhere from three to five thousand dollars a year just for having one of these on their property. One other thing to mention, you can make these 3D layers and then bring your image out, add some lights, a camera, and uh, you can get some interesting effects that way. And you may want a different background. You may decide instead of a legal pad, you'd like a chalkboard. Make that comp size. Come down to our drop shadow and change that to white. And put a mask on there so that we stay on our chalkboard. And there you have it. I hope you have some fun with this technique and try different combinations of strokes, shadows, and backgrounds for some interesting results. And I really would enjoy seeing what you come up with. I said this was quick and easy, so we'll go ahead and wrap up for now. Until next time, this is Rob Mize wishing you happy compositing.